Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles. Instead, I've got Squid King. Hi, it's me, that person that shows up like once a year. Once a year? You've, you've been in like two videos this oh, year. Oh wow, two whole videos this Two year. whole videos, Man, yeah. Those are record numbers. Uh, anyway, we're gonna talk about video games. And we always bring Squid King in when we talk about video games. You can check out more uh, Squid King on the Clownfish Studios. Shameless cross promotion. Cross promotion. We're gonna be crossing a lot of things here pretty soon. Yeah, so uh, check out Clownfish Gaming. Uh, Squid King in every other video. Yeah, I know, isn't that more of me? Cause that's what you wanted. Lots more Squid King, but we're gonna talk about this stupidity. Uh, Halo, the live action TV show on Paramount Plus, just sounds better and better and better. And by better, I mean worse. Uh, every time we hear news about this show, it sounds like a, a disaster in the making from them retconning everything to them uh, changing the origin of Master Chief to the rumors that the uh, new uh, teenage girl is actually gonna be the focus of the show. And now we're finding out that the showrunner didn't even play Halo. He didn't play the game. See, you know, you know this is gonna be great when the picture they're using to promote this show looks like a cosplayer taking a photo op at Galaxy's Edge. Like that background <laughs> does not look like Halo. Like no, it's like the that's like the the backside look, of a Costco. Look, they even got Lando here. His face is just covered. Oh my god, yeah, there's his cape. Uh yeah, so we're gonna talk about this. We we did a video a couple days ago talking about how we think Halo is gonna be DOA, and that was just based on a lot of the changes being made to the show. Uh, and now we're finding out the showrunner didn't even play the games. That's that's not good. No, that doesn't even make any sense. You know, this isn't like a, like Marvel. Halo. <laughs> let's just make a movie. Okay, fair. Never read the comics, let's make movies. But like Halo, I mean, Halo had like books and stuff and shows like outside of the games. But Halo as a franchise was made for the games, so when you're not paying attention to what these characters were made for specifically, like, you can't accurately depict them in other media. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 261,000 subs. That's a lot of people. Uh, that is a lot of people, yeah. Uh, yeah, 261,000 subs. We do talk about the video game industry on occasion, not as much as other channels. Um, but we've been following the disaster that is Halo. We think this is going to be uh, something talked about for years to come, like how not to adapt a video game, sort of like the live action Super Mario Brothers. Oh, wow. Maybe not that bad, but uh, it, it won't be that bad, I don't think. But meanwhile, it's not going to be good. <laughs> no, meanwhile, we've got Sonic 2 coming out in a couple of weeks and it looks pretty damn good. And they're going out of their way to make sure that the uh, fans of the franchise are happy. They even took the even the poster. The poster for Sonic 2 looks like the box art from Sonic 2. Which is so weird to me because in theory it would be much easier to adapt Halo to a show given like its subject matter than to adapt Sonic, you know? Like if they manage yeah. to adapt a game where a blue hedgehog picks up rings for like 50 levels and they're struggling to adapt a show that has plenty of, you know, politics and religious talk and over-the-top shooter violence, like, that's, that's not a good sign. Because this this would make for good television if they didn't, you know, butcher it. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, Halo fans are a very dedicated bunch. In fact, we have a, a good family friend who is a massive, massive Halo fan. I mean, we're talking this guy has spent uh, thousands of dollars on armor. Very and, impressive uh, Spartan armor. Very impressive Spartan. You know who you are. You know who you are. And The guy uh, who went as a Transformer on Halloween. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yeah, they thought he was a Transformer. Uh, no, his, his armor Made him hold a baby. Made him hold a baby, too. It was really weird. We didn't know those people. We didn't know those people. Uh, but yeah, we know people who are Halo super fans. Halo has a lot of lore. Um, lots of lore. Lots and lots of lore. Lots of uh, plot points that they could have developed better. Lots of uh, you know, tertiary characters that they could have fleshed out more. Instead, they're going to uh, reinvent all of it. And when people complain, they're going to be like, oh, guys, this is the silver timeline. This is an alternate universe. You still have your blue Cortana and your Dr. Halsey's, right? You still have your Arbiters. But in this one, Master Chief cries. So this is a different timeline. Yeah, we're going to talk about this. They, look, they need to stop talking to the media because every time they talk to the media about the worse. show, it gets worse. 
like you're, you're anti-marketing. We talk about, in videos, we talk about anti-help. Like anti-help is help that means well, but it actually makes you more work. You guys are doing anti-marketing. You think you're building up buzz and excitement for the show. And with <laughs> every damn interview you do, you kill any enthusiasm people might have for this show. Because nothing says hype and excitement like we're changing all your favorite characters and retconning everything. Yeah. Because I mean, that's gone well in the past. This is a disaster. 265 scripts. Oh my God. 265. That is an absurdly high number. Drafts later, they finally got another a, a half-assed version of, of Halo to screen. How hard is this to adapt properly? I mean, it again... It really shouldn't be that. I mean, I love Halo, right? Halo has lots of lore, but, like, the basic story of Halo is pretty simple, right? I mean, they do it well, but it's it's a pretty pretty simple story, you know? So there's lots of room for improvement. So how they've managed to make it worse somehow is astounding. They could have just taken the the plot and expanded upon things and used uh, characters and plot points from the games, uh, from the books, from lots of books, lots of comics. Lots, lots of even TV shows. They already made live action Halo stuff. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, why? how is this? How is this so hard? Apparently it's really hard to get right. And it doesn't help. If you've never played the damn games. Yeah, that would definitely not help. <laughs> so this is a, this is variety. We'll, we'll talk about these tweets and then we'll go out and read this uh, idiotic article, this anti-marketing, uh, anti-hype article. Variety on Twitter says, Halo season one showrunner Stephen King, who uh, actually quit. He quit already. Oh, that's not good. Uh, both of the showrunners quit before season one even premiered. That is never a good sign. Uh, probably because he knows exactly what's going to happen. Anyway, Stephen King, uh, Stephen King estimates he wrote more than 265 drafts. Just for the first nine episodes? For the first nine episodes. Balancing, oh. balancing everything from the production's needs to story notes from Steven Spielberg. Well, you can't tell Steven Spielberg no. Uh, to the desire to fold in as much of the mythology as possible. Mythology that we're retconning, to clarify. How would he know he didn't play the games? The richness and depth of the universe was immediately mind-boggling and incredibly exciting, Master Chief actor Pablo Schreiber says of Halo. What it means as a storyteller is there's already been a huge amount of preparation and groundwork, which they're going to throw out. Uh, a lot of it, they're throwing everything out. Even the the, the basic plot line, uh, the fall of Reach. Which uh, is insane to me because that literally kicks off. I mean, there was lots of story before and after the Fall of Reach, but the Fall of Reach is what kicked off the games, which is like the meat of Halo's story. And apparently Master Chief has amnesia and he's going to take his helmet off a lot and he's going to cry because he's a kinder, gentler Spartan. Uh, Halo Season 1 showrunner Stephen King on Master Chief's storyline. We're going to tell a story about a man discovering his own humanity. He is a killing machine. Yes. That's what he does. A, a plot point is that he kind of has to, you know, face the, you know, the, the identity crisis of like, A, this lady is kind of my mom, but she's also a monster. But I'm sure probably not going to get to see that. Spoilers. Yeah, the women won't be bad in this one. The Master Chief. Master Chief is going to be the bad guy. I bet you they kill off Master Chief. And they bring... Probably. It, like your mom and I, we have a we have a bet. We think that the the new female, uh, the new teenager, they're bringing in that by the end of the series, she's going to be the new Master Chief. Like, yeah, I just found this orphan, and she gets to wear the armor now. This Spartan Through. armor will be perfect once it fits a woman. Exactly. While the Halo series will draw heavily from the game's mythology, it will chart its own separate storytelling path. The Halo TV series exists in what 343 is calling the Silver Timeline because it's already old. It's, yeah, the rusty, yeah, the low it's budget, getting old, the low budget, uh, real world, current year tech, um, yeah, uh, filmed outside of Costco. Uh, Jen Taylor, who voices Cortana in the games and plays the character in the series via performance capture, says it shows a different kind of beast. Uh, do you want it to be exactly the way you've already played it and already seen it? I'm not sure. I well, mean, I don't. Okay, I'll, I'll admit. I don't think people would be happy if it was like a one-to-one -one recreation of the games. But like they already said, the Halo universe is so interesting. Like why? I mean, I know Master Chief is like the focal point of Halo, but when there's so much other stuff to look at, 
why not just cut him out of it and make a show about another part of the universe? Like, that would make more sense, but, you know, don't get that good, good advertising money without Master Chief on the poster. We didn't look at the game. We didn't even talk about the game. Oh. We didn't even talk about the game. You're making... A game show. Well, not a game show, but <laughs> yeah. a show about a game. How badly can you screw this up? Uh, you're making a show about one of the most popular video game franchises in history. And you're like, yeah, we didn't really play it. We didn't really talk about the game at all. There's all this other stuff that we're going to ignore, too. I mean, um, and like, it's so weird to me because, like, I said this before, the universe was made for the games. Yeah. So you really have to consider, like, how does the game impact how these characters act because like I doubt the flood would just blindly throw themselves at you if it was like a movie they'd probably think more logically but you know it's a game so they act that way so like when you're not looking at the games at all you like don't understand the characters fully in the environment they were supposed to be put into the Halo showrunner says he gives credit to Microsoft. You can pitch them something brand new, and unless it really complicated them in terms of the canon or values of the show, they embraced it. So sidelining Master Chief... They're also immediately throwing the blame to Microsoft, like right off the bat here. Like, Yeah, I don't think Bungie would, would uh, necessarily let them get away with this, but um, with the budget running more than $10 million per, $10 million per episode, how does it look so cheap? Like... How does it look so cheap? $10 million per episode. That's like, yeah, they're going to be spending $100 million on this damn thing by the time they're done. Holy hell. The Halo TV series already renewed for season two is easily Paramount Plus' strongest argument yet that it belongs to the big kids table with Netflix, Disney Plus, and Amazon Prime. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, you belong at the big kids table with Cowboy Bebop. That's what's uh, going to happen. Uh, Halo is a swing for a broad audience. Uh said the chief programming officer. My hope is this expands what Paramount Plus can be. Uh, Showtime co-president of entertainment, Gary Levine on the Halo series moved to Paramount Plus. We knew it could really thrive there. It could throw a whole lot of money at it to ensure it's a success. Because yes. you know how many people are using Paramount Plus. It's all it's the talk of the town. Everyone, oh man. Have you seen Star Trek, Star Trek, and more Star Trek? Is yes. that what they have in Paramount Plus? Basically just Star Trek, oh. yeah. Lots of Star Trek shows that actually a lot of Star Trek fans don't like very that much. makes sense. So now they're going to have another sci-fi show that sci-fi fans won't like very much. Yeah, um, yeah. Paramount I Plus is... anyone's going to like this very much. Uh, because I think everything I have read so far, the early reviews are very middle of the road. Uh, people that have seen it said it's a science fiction show. And that's about I it. It's the, functional. The it's problem pretty. is that your target demographic should be the Halo fans. So when you're making a show that Halo fans don't want to watch, you lose your key demographic. Yeah. But then if you're painting with a broad brush to get as many people as possible, if people weren't into Halo before, like, I don't think this is going to suddenly sway them over. Like, personally, I've never been too into Star Trek, right? Because mm -hmm. we're talking about it. Like, you could change Star Trek all you want, right, to make it more, like, broadly appealing yeah i'm not gonna watch it because i just i never got into star trek you know i think this is the same thing you're not gonna find any success because like the halo fans won't watch it and if somebody didn't like halo this isn't gonna change their mind <laughs> no um yeah they had a bumpy history, didn't they? It says Halo executive producer and director Otto uh, Bathurst, like Schreiber. Bathurst they had never, never played, played the, the game, game before he landed the job to direct the pilot. And at first glance, he was at a loss for how to translate a video game that puts players inside the perspective of Master Chief. I was nervous. Fun fact, uh, they kind of got something wrong here. Technically not. Um, the only time, apart from Halo 5, like the main Halo trilogy... Master Chief is the only Spartan you see, so we didn't really have any Spartan friends. They never played the game. No, clearly. So, yeah. you know. Uh, I was nervous, he says. How do you take a first-person shooter and expand it? I don't know you, when you it's... Don't, when, I mean... They've well, got books, they've got yeah. comics, they've got all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, you expand it in ways that build on the story that's already there. <laughs> As Bathurst and his collaborators quickly discovered... The problem with bringing Halo TV wasn't how to expand it. Quite the opposite. Oh, that's not a good sign. Lots of lore. So let's just start over again. Let's just start over. God. Oh. Um, yeah, they talked about uh, Peter Jackson and um, Blomkamp. They wanted to do it and uh, it got derailed. That actually probably would have been the better version 
because he did uh, District 9, which was – have you seen District yeah. 9? It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I think he would have been a good choice for – I think that would definitely like the whole aliens thing would have worked out better. Yeah. Steven Spielberg plays Halo, though. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, there we go. Um, we don't look at the game. Yeah, we, we felt limited by the game. The richness and the depth of the universe was kind of mind-boggling. So, again, this is what happens with a lot of these adaptations, is they look at the lore and they look at the fandom, and they're like, oh, my God, this is going to be really hard to adapt, you know, 20, 30 years of uh, history. And, uh, yeah, let's just let's just read the Cliff Notes version. And then we're just going to go in a totally different direction. Yeah, I like this part where they literally say, Microsoft didn't want us to make this show unless it stuck to what already existed. And we basically said, no, we're not doing that and made a new timeline. That's a that's a great sign. Yeah. So now I'm trying to figure out what part of the lore that like they, they were like, yeah, we can't make a show out of this. Because honestly, Halo has some complicated lore, but nothing in it is like, oh man, this would never work as a show level the only thing I can think, uh, yeah, because Microsoft is even like, yeah, they're like, you're not, you're not changing Halo. Halo is successful for a reason. You're not changing it. I think it's because Steven Spielberg. I think Steven Spielberg came in and he's freaking Steven Spielberg, and they're not going to tell Steven Spielberg to suck a peach, you know? Yeah, as Pinky Boo would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, early on, we're thinking about doing something that could tie very closely with the game. Which is a good idea. <laughs> what we were finding was trying to verbatim stay within everything that had come before. Uh, it wasn't serving the medium. It also wasn't serving the creative teams and their need to express a story and build the world through their eyes. But that's not why you were hired. You were hired to build a Halo story. Oh, my God. There's no way I was ever going to grasp the whole thing. This is Bathurst who directed the pilot or whatever. So there was a lot of phone a friend, the director says, of his collaboration. At the same time, they were extraordinary in their acceptance of the fact that they couldn't just try to square peg round hole their 20 years of history. Gaming uh, is a completely different medium. Which is fair. That's a fair point. But then it kind of ties back to like, well, then why didn't you just make a story with like, characters that were brand like all of them were new instead of going back and changing everything that already existed tell a story in the halo universe that just doesn't tie into the main story like at all make a halo tv show that's just like a side story or something like that uh so it is jen taylor who's doing cortana but they made her look like a soccer mom Uh, that's kind of weird that's yeah and she said the show's version is a new and exciting different kind of beast I like how in her quote, she doesn't say that people will definitely like it. She literally says, I'm not sure. This, okay, so she's been playing Cortana. She's been doing the voice of Cortana since the beginning. Yes. So like 20 plus years. Yes. So I'm sure she's very familiar with the Halo fandom. Probably because Cortana has like one of the most vocal roles in the entire franchise. So I remember when the first uh, Michael Bay Transformers movie came out and Peter Cullen was ecstatic that they actually used his voice for Optimus Prime. But you could tell in interviews he was kind of like, yeah, it's not quite the same Optimus Prime that was a cartoon show, you know, because he was like, you know, ripping off Decepticon heads and very, very angry, impatient Optimus Prime. Not the father figure, not the Santa Claus that turns into a truck. Yeah, uh, he was he was kind of nasty. So I don't I don't I don't know. This isn't this is not gonna go over well. It's not gonna go over well. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is this is how you take a hundred million dollars and light it on fire. Um, God, they they're just basically trying to justify all the changes. We're gonna tell a story about his humanity. He's discovering his humanity and his feelings about his abusive childhood. But she did in the games, but probably better than they'll do in the, the show. Yeah. I like the part where he calls Master Chief a six-year-old girl. Wait, what? Right. Wait, what? I mean, okay, he, he phrases it differently, but he's everybody, right? He's you. He's me. He's a six-year-old girl. He's a 15-year-old person in a different country. Whoever plays the game is him. Okay, well, I, I, I guess. Sort of. I mean, like, you're not wrong. You're not technically wrong. I don't think you're necessarily right either. Yeah, uh, we've got some media outlets out there trying to defend all the, the changes. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. It's it's not doing so hot on Rotten Tomatoes. There are a couple of early reviews uh, for this show. 
but the audience reviews aren't in yet. Man, Grease Randolph, extremely generic sci-fi and incredibly different from the source material in ways that are not justified. This doesn't cut it in the ultra-competitive streaming arena. Ouch. Uh, I don't see much in these early episodes to make investing in a full season worthwhile. as Joe Blow. Halo does not come remotely close to any of the other sci-fi or fantasy series out there and represents yet another mediocre video game adaptation. That's not good. That's not good, guys. I like to point out this one because this is like what always goes wrong here is that it basically tries to appeal to diehard Halo fans and to like people who just want to watch a TV show. Yeah, but people said that, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't do it for either because a lot of the reviews, if you go through them, even the positive reviews are like, this is a very generic sci-fi action show. Yeah, which you is know? kind of, you know, not exactly yeah. what Halo is. There is a reason the game is incredibly uh, popular. God, look at AV Club, which you'd think be all over it. They, they don't like it. Decider doesn't like it. Indie Wire doesn't like it. Hollywood Reporter. Boasting no technological innovation, few performances to offer meaningful grounding, and only limited action thrills, Halo is aggressively forgettable, which is at least several steps up from bad. Oh. <laughs> it's a very forgettable. It took how long for this to come out? 265 drafts. Long. 265 drafts, and it's aggressively forgettable. Yeah, that's not a good sign. That's play, not a good sign. Play the game. Play the game first before you get a job being a showrunner. Yeah, that would, you know, or at least have some idea of what it's about. Ask your kid. <laughs> What's Halo about? Oh, a guy in green armor shoots things. Oh, okay, that sounds... And there are big rings that blow up life. Boof. And oh. there's a blue lady. A blue lady. Yeah, she's not blue now. She looks like a soccer mom. I don't know. Anyway, we got to wrap this up. Yeah, that's probably a, a good idea. We're going to do the thing that the Halo show never did. <laughs> Finish early. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye -bye. Oh, am I supposed That's to where you say bye. Okay, well, I don't watch your videos. Yeah, I know. He doesn't, actually. I don't. I, I think I've watched, like, one of your videos. The one with you in it? Yeah, I hear your voice all day, so I don't want to yeah. hear more of it. Everybody's sick of me. See ya.